You're now tuned in to Box Power Sound. Out there like mouth gear, in there like swimmer. Season two, Box Power Sound. Come on, tap into it. with the one and only Chloe Brown. It is an honor to have you. Uh, just to say the least, Chloe Brown was running for mayor recently. Five candidates running for mayor of the provincial capital. Here are just some of the highlights from that event. Gil Penalosa, Stephen Punwasi, Sarah Kleiman Haga, Chloe Brown, policy analyst at the Future Skills Center, and John Tory has the job the other four won. Hi Toronto, my name is Chloe and I am running for mayor of Toronto because after eight years of subsidizing the lifestyles of the rich and famous, it's time that working class people actually get a shot at building their communities. And you came in third. Yeah. Iconic. <laughs> Iconic. Thank you. <laughs> I'm still like a little flabbergasted people using those words on me, but um, I'm really humbled, grateful, because it was really a small project for me and my love of the city. And I just wanted to change the way that politicians talked about Toronto, the people that lived in it, specifically working class, millennials, people of color, because as a policy analyst, I hear the talks about like, oh, we don't show up to the polls, we don't do this, we don't do that, and this is why we're not represented. And with this platform, it's like, well, we've gone to school, we know the language, we've yes. done our work, and this is the platform, so you have no choice but to hear us. Yes. Yeah, so I'm really grateful people resonated with that yeah. because, yeah, it just took off in the last two weeks. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. it was like a wildfire across social media. Um, so if you can, can, can you let us know a little bit about uh, your experience campaigning and what that looked like for you and, and what kind of team support you had? What, what was your situation like? So... It was a very lean campaign. <laughs> when I say lean, it's like Salom Afua like just messaged me on Twitter and she saw that I was running and she's like, mm -hmm. I'm going to help you. It wasn't even a question. She's I like, I'm going to help you. I love that. And she just took over my social media. I wrote my policies, I built my videos, mm -hmm. and she just talked me through making it digestible for mm. a wider audience. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I personally struggle with because I write for politicians. Yes. Yeah, so it's like I can dissect a problem and tell you all the things about it, but if I only have two minutes to do that, it makes it difficult for me to connect with you. Fair. Yeah, so yeah. it was really just wild that she got on my Twitter. We started to get that momentum, and then this young lady named Ania, or Ania, I'm not even sure, but like she just... Her name is at S Crude mm. on TikTok. Hello, if you live in the city of Toronto, this video is for you. And she just spliced my video together in these really yeah. like sports highlights. Everything that she's saying, I could find the budget online in a PowerPoint presentation in 15 slides. These are not issues. The issue is, is that people don't take the time, particularly part politicians, to do their research. So John just read the announcements during the pandemic. I really didn't, I personally <laughs> did not feel any leadership. I heard more announcements from Doug Ford selling me Tim Hortons than how to find a proper vaccine clinic. And I create recommendations for the John Tories of the world because they don't do their research, because they don't take any action outside of me telling you to do your job. And delegating is not a sign of leadership. Yeah, yeah, and like, shh. Yeah, after that, it was like, it took off so quickly. Like, my phone vibrated off my computer desk. And yeah. my mom called me saying, like, you wouldn't guess what's happening. Like, I'm at Go Bus Station watching someone watch you. It really started to hit me what was going on because it started to hit my family what was going on. Yeah. It's not something that people in my family do. We're working class. Yes, yes. And we take pride in that. So it's like for me to even step on this platform and talk my talk. My talk. talk your tings. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> it was wild because yeah. it's like my parents were like, Chloe, you don't have to rough him up like that. <laughs> and I didn't think it's roughing him up because it's like. Why can't you take the heat? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that was like the big thing about this campaign because I work at Ryerson. Mm -hmm. 
I meet with students all the time and it's not just me advising them on like take this degree. It's like this is where you get a food bank. This is how you get yeah. like Ontario works. Yeah. And like it eats at me. It actually eats at me because it's not that we grew up in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. We grew up in places where people had no problem denying us opportunity because we didn't look like X, Y, Z, or we didn't have the right credit degree. All these little things, things. that are in like unimportant. Mm -hmm. It's a domino effect. You Seriously. know what I mean? Seriously. So, yeah, like I did my little run. It wasn't a big thing, but it became a big thing. <laughs> I didn't imagine that. 35,000 plus people would gravitate to this mm -hmm. message. Mm -hmm. And I feel like even more than that. Yeah. And the power of social media is, is incredible because you've met a lot of your team from there. Mm -hmm. It's crazy what we are able to do in this day and age, like just pop a little yeah. video on TikTok and it has 17,000 likes and, mm -hmm. and you can really meet a lot of incredible people and, and change the world that way. And this is where like the reality check wasn't just for John Tory, it was of for course, all of yeah. us. Because how much money do you really think you're sinking into this city yeah. performing poorly? Yeah. And this is where like, I treated John like someone who owes me money, a million dollars worth of money. You know what I mean? Because my taxes, my cell phone, my cable, all that oh. is going into this man's salary. Don't, don't get us started on Ontario, uh, Ontario's phone bills. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, yeah. John Tory sits at the board of the Rogers Control Trust. Mm. That board decides how everyone, like, gets their shares. Yes. He does have the power to tell them, like, hey, can we set up a program for lower income people? Yeah. Can we do this? Can Prioritize. We do that? Yeah. And that's, that is my biggest beef with John because, like, don't come up to my neighborhood, smile up in my face, take yeah. pictures with my people. Shake hands, yeah. Shake hands and use us as props for your photo ops. Yeah. It's disrespectful. Yeah. And I think I'm a very reasonable and ethical person and this is why I did a election run mm -hmm. versus a different type of activism because mm -hmm. I could have done that. You but would've. I came to John respectfully. Mm -hmm. But disrespectfully, you don't come into the public arena that is the city of Toronto and rob people of their opportunities because the bus is late. You don't rob the, like, yes. these are different ways that the rich rob the poor yes. to me. Yes. Like, bad bus service can cost you your job. It can make you late for your classes. Like, not being able to afford food, you have to choose between loading your presto, paying your rent. Like, these are decisions that are influenced by politicians. Yes. So it's, there's a, a very clear cause and effect here. Yeah. And, and there has to be some some solution. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to fighting for your community, which is what we have to do, especially as, as black women, we have to, to juggle it all. How have you dealt with the whole bl angry black woman trope? Because the second you're passionate yeah. and articulate and assertive, it can be an issue. So how have you handled that? I tell them aim for the head. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, for real, like I'm so, the reason why I was able to get on that stage and dissect John Tory the way I did is mm. because I do my research. Yes. Like, you can talk a whole bunch of nasty things about me, but, like, if you can't dissect my argument and tell me that it's not logical, rational, or that it doesn't have substance, yes. you, like, move from me. Yes, we could you know talk about I mean? my tone all day. Yeah. Let's look at the argument. Yeah. And this is where, like, I love my social media manager, Salom, because she taught me, like, that's just anti-blackness. Like it's yeah. deflection. It's people trying to hit you with surface stuff because they can't reach your deep roots. Mm. And this is where I'm very proud to have Jamaican parents because it's like, yeah, you can talk all day about me, but I know where I come from. Yeah. And I know that like, you're gonna have to try to knock me really far down the ladder because as Jamaicans, we will come back and I will come back stronger, yeah. you know? so. This is where like us as young people really have to embrace our roots because mm -hmm. yeah, you may have come here shackled, but you're leaving here free. I love that. Wow. Yeah. I love that. I and love that's that. the thing. It's like, we're so ashamed of ourselves because we come from poor roots because that's what we've been conditioned to believe mm -hmm. that your income is a sign of your character, mm -hmm. but it's the work. content yeah. of what you do. And this is where like, I love, I love my people. I love my working class, my low income, my artists, like, 
if you can come to me authentically, mm. I can sit with you. But if you come to me with any pretense, I cannot sit with you. Yes. It's that black and white for me. Because at the end of the day, I have met people with wealth who will abandon you when things get hard. Mm -hmm. And I can't roll with people who will not be tough when things get tough. Yes, and that's why community is so important. And that's why we have to fortify community because mm -hmm. we're, we've, we've lost that sense of, I, firstly, Toronto um, is known to not have the same sense of uh, community just because we, we don't have the numbers. Mm -hmm. it's, we have a smaller population and then an even smaller black population. So it's already been kind of a struggle for, for the city. Yeah. The city feels a little fragmented Absolutely. Uh, right now. I don't know if other people can really relate to that. So mm -hmm. it is really nice to see you come out full force and like, like you know what, everybody just shut up and listen to what I have to say. And this is, this is what we have to do. And sometimes yeah. that's, that's so necessary. Look at where it's gotten you. Well, that's the thing. It's like the same way we're talking on this couch is the way people talk to me regularly. Yes. And I have to like rate my friends so hard for this because it's like they keep me humble. Yes. You know what I mean? I have a bunch of ideas, but like how many of them are feasible matters. And I only get to check that when my friends check me. Yes. You know what I mean? So it's one of those. That's why it feels like a labor of love to me because it's like I wasn't going to let John Tory get this city for free. He would have to come through me. He would have to like battle me on stage for it. I yeah. don't care. He would have to lip sync for his life, basically. <laughs> I love like, it. I love it. I yeah, love like, it. And that's the thing. Like When I finally caught up with him, mm -hmm. I was just like, so this is what you're bringing me? Like yeah. Your recited lines? I'm going to yeah. lip sync you, like, lip sync you into the ground. And yes. that's what it is because me coming out with no notes is me just knowing my who my you are, lines, who what I you want to do, what you need to exactly. get done. Anybody can go out and regurgitate jargon and be like, oh yeah, yeah of course, especially, especially when you come from a long line of politicians or, or whatever yeah. the case is. It's very easy, very easy to do that. But I want to know a little bit more about this uh, vigor that you have to, to fight for, for the people. Did you have these aspirations as a, as a young girl? Did this, did you wake up one day and say, I'm gonna run for mayor? No, honestly, like, I grew up at Islington Finch, 2765 Islington Avenue, Round Tree Forever. Um, <laughs> and I used to have to go up to the 15th story, like on mm. the roof to see Toronto. Wow. Yeah, like down going downtown was the treat, yes. you know? And I just wanted to have an apartment and a dog, and I just wanted to like marry my husband and like yeah. live in Toronto Just because live. that was the dream. I never imagined I would be asking the people of Toronto to come to bat for me. Mm. You know what I mean? I just thought I would live my little life mm -hmm. and do my little thing, but it's like it's become so much bigger than that. Yeah. Our lives have been disrupted with mm -hmm. the the cost of living crisis and the, and the wage crisis. And so we have no choice but to disrupt the system. Our lives have been been so disrupted. Yeah. Um so it's it's only fair that, that we respond with some disruption as well. Well, and that's, this is why like I was really keen on getting young people to vote because John Tory has his 30%. That means 70% of people are not mm -hmm. participating. Mm -hmm. And with the 6% that I was able to get, it means that the voter turnout could have been much lower. Mm. And this is where I start to I start to get a little hopeful. <laughs> I know it's not a Toronto thing to do. Like we're stush. We're just like, yo, prove it to me. <laughs> right? Right? But it's like, like a vote after you win. Like yeah. not how it works. Not, not how it works. Oh, like the amount of I wish I knew about you sooner. And it's like this election's been in the news since May. But like yeah. that's me being a policy analyst. <laughs> yeah, right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. So it's like I don't even fault people, but it's like this is the opportunity to like pressure mm -hmm. <laughs> to pressure these politicians and into shake doing up the things. city yes like change the way that you're seeing Toronto mm -hmm. and this is where like I will always bug the arts community because it's like if they realize how much power they could have by yes. creating music artist like theater and different things to sway people's minds on how they saw themselves as Torontonians mm -hmm. it could change the way that we vote mm -hmm. like Drake is an example of that. Yes. Like he leveraged that career on Degrassi into mm -hmm. a, a global recording career that even has politicians talking about his global influence and they do consult him 
on certain things, you know what I mm -hmm. mean? Because that brand has power. Exactly. So it's like, how much more power would the collectives have? We all need to figure out what our role is. Like, we can't all be top shata, number yeah. one, the yeah. king of Toronto. Like, someone has to do paperwork. Someone <laughs> has to, like, be the event planner. And there's no shame in that. Exactly. This is where community matters because it's like you shouldn't feel shame for your role, no matter how big or small it is. It contributes to the larger, the bigger whole. picture, the bigger yes. picture. And a big part of the struggle with that as well is the instant gratification that that millennials and Gen Z and now Alpha. I, there's another generation, um, but I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been away for like two months, and there's a whole new generation. There's a new people. generation now. The wow. Alpha. So I'm like, <laughs> it's a good name though. It's a good name. They they got a good name. The Alpha. Alpha. Yeah. I deal with Alpha males all the time. I don't need any more of these Greek letters. Like. I, <laughs> I just need people to just be themselves. Right, be yourself, <laughs> be yourself. A big issue though for us is the instant gratification of it yeah. all and people don't want to play the long game. Mm -hmm. And it's really important that we have to realize that sometimes, I say it all the time, sometimes it's your life's work. Yeah. Sometimes you don't even see the fruits of your labor. You, mm -hmm. some, you might not even see it, um, but that doesn't mean it's not worth it. Well, that's the thing. It's like when I was, when I first started going to post-secondary, I went to school to be a physiotherapist. Oh, wow, okay. Yes, I just wanted to work for FIFA and like find my husband in the so ranks of like <laughs> the soccer's best competition. <laughs> Forgive me, God. But um, I took that knowledge of science and systems and adapted mm. it to cities and systems. Mm -hmm. And this is where a lot of us need to really consider what we talk about when we're talking about doing the work. Yes. And it's like, no, you really need to dig deep. In the on, trenches. Yeah, the trenches of who you are. And tell me, like, what are three things that you are absolutely proud of doing mm. and you, you would, like, demand someone pay you for? Mm. So it's like, what are you willing to give your eight hours or 12 hours a day to doing? Big Sean said it so well, but it's like, it took 10 years to be an overnight success. Yes, very, and very true. Yeah, a lot of young people don't see that. Mm -hmm. And this is where a lot of us have to shape, like shift our thinking towards like, what could we do with our strength and our weaknesses? Mm -hmm. Because you will always have your weaknesses, mm -hmm. I will always have mine, but mm -hmm. your strengths could improve my weaknesses. Yes, yes. And instead of me trying to pit myself against you, we're more powerful together. Very true. Yeah, and this like applies to our art sector. It applies to our like, our housing sector. Everything, everything. We are, yeah. We're stronger together. We're stronger exactly. together. So when it comes to the starving artists in Toronto mm -hmm. and uh, the employment crisis and the housing crisis, how do you think that uh, we can see change in the city? Because we have exported some of the biggest artists. Yes. We have The Weeknd, we have Justin Bieber, Shawn Mendes, Drake, obviously, just to name a few. They're literally like the top five streamed artists in the yeah. la over the last couple of years. We are influencing the masses in that type of way, but we have no say mm -hmm. in our in our home yeah. in our home base and and I and I really do agree that those are the, some of the things that they need to be prioritized now they need to be prioritized well it's also on artists to expand their reach because mm. art based therapy could be something that fuels the way that arts are funded and it happens when they build bridges with scientists, they build bridges with urban planners, they build bridges with people outside of the arts community. Artists really need to just break out of their shell. Like, mm. we know you're talented, we know you're creative. Talk to me on how like your creativity can be used towards policy. Mm. Because when I think about what inspires me, I grew up on Jay-Z, Nas, I grew up on Lauryn Hill. Like, the being the first lady of a rap group was really important. Mm -hmm. And it's something that like drives me to yeah. exist in male dominated industries because like, why not? Yeah, and we're gonna this, be the one. And that's the thing, it's like artists are multi-dimensional people. And instead of just focusing on like, just making albums or producing mm -hmm. content, you could turn that into creating music for a political commercial. You can turn that into creating art for politics and that builds your clout. Yeah, and it, it, it widens your, your audience, but more importantly, I, I, I'm not a, a performing artist, but I'm definitely a creative and, and I work alongside artists a lot of the time. Um, but that, I would assume that would kind of deepen your journey and bring exactly. more, you know what I mean, more value to, to the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, especially, we've seen it time and time again where 
where, uh, especially black artists, you go into the studio, you record and you leave, you do what you need to do, and you're not worried about how it impacts your, your yeah. community and the, the greater impact on the people that, that look like you. It's very easy to walk into a studio and sing about gun violence mm -hmm. um, and you know calling women out of their name, but when you, ha when you have to turn around and look at your community, there's clearly a disconnect. There's yeah. clearly a disconnect. And this is where it's so important for all of us to be involved in politics because it's like, one of the big signs of success is like, oh, you made it out of the hood, but you're still paying for the services that people in the hood need. Mm. And this is where charity drives and all those things become like really shallow because it's like you're coming back every Thanksgiving having to give out turkeys. Meanwhile, if you confronted your government, you wouldn't have to do these you things. You wouldn't have to do these things. Yeah. If you put your foot on some necks, you wouldn't have to do these things and you yeah. wouldn't have to, like handouts shouldn't be the norm. Well, and this is where the idea of handouts need to change because it's like you can give someone a handout by creating programs that allow mm, yes. them to realize their potential. Yes. Because like not everyone who makes it in the music industry is an artist. We got producers, yeah. sound engineers, Fair. you have set designers. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes those those occupations are left out. Like even when I think about movies, mm -hmm. rarely do people talk about the stuntmen, the costume yes. designers, and those people set the tone of the entire Higher production. production. And this is where like artists really need to dig deep inside themselves because it's like you could set the tone of an entire election. Mm. Look at what Barack Obama's art did. Yes, we can. Those use of colors, mm -hmm. those things inspire people. And resonated and, and spoke to people in a yeah. way that maybe his, his speech wouldn't have. Yeah. That's, that's, very, that's very interesting. And what would you say to, to artists who are told to stick to the music and not get involved in politics? Because we see people like, like Kanye who has made such a an incredible legacy for himself and he has gotten himself really deep into a political space uh, how, how would you how would you navigate that if you were an artist trying to get into politics when I think about like the power that Kanye West has had with his brands and what he could have done with it it's the fact that he has polluted himself with like that's political such a good, rhetoric uh, term. He's polluted his legacy, his message. It's, yeah. it's been polluted and tainted. He's polluted it for like sensationalist fame that is associated with sensationalist politics. Mm. And I don't think he understood the gravity of this because it's like, yeah, you can do shock and awe in entertainment, but if you do that in politics, you will get crushed. Mm. You can't do shock and awe with industry, businesses, community mm. organizations, we all have a greater stake in this than you as an artist because these are the programs that feed our kids, they educate mm -hmm. them, like this, and this is the thing, like I hate to say that Kanye is like John Tory where it's like you thought your power and privilege will buy you unchecked access unchecked. and unchecked freedom. Mm. Meanwhile, freedom is the balance of rights and responsibilities. You have the right to do whatever you want, but you have also have the responsibility to deal with the outcome of it. Thank you. You you will all, the, the consequences will always be there. And the thing that is always so frustrating about Kanye is that there there are two, two, there is some validity to some degree to a lot of the arguments, but it's so easy as we were talking about anti-blackness. It's so easy to just point at certain things that he's going through that's going to completely cloud mm -hmm. whatever message he may have, which makes it difficult for the rest of us to, to come along with that message and yeah. fight for the power that we believe we deserve um, because we tend to get thrown yeah. in the same bucket. This is where we need to elevate like other people who are good at things. Mm -hmm. Like the accountant doesn't get shine. The lawyer doesn't get shine. Like we're all little nerds in our little arenas, but it's like you literally need me to navigate the industry. Mm -hmm. And yeah. this is where like we need to expand our partnerships beyond the people that make us comfortable. Because yeah, I have a friend that is a lawyer. I have a friend that is an accountant and I run decisions by them and they're not afraid to be like, Chloe, that's insane. That's crazy. You yeah. sound crazy. Yeah. yeah. Like if you came to me as a professional and you pitched it to me, I would say no. And you need to be surrounded by people that are critical mm. just as they are supportive. Mm. I love that. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, I don't know Kanye's circle, but it's just like, 
it seems like he's surrounded by enablers. It, it is, and it, it's 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 interesting because, as you mentioned, it seems like he kind of applied his strategy and framework as just a musical artist to politics. Yeah, and and sensationalism doesn't it doesn't work necessarily both ways. Mm -hmm. And politics is not about raw given talent. Mm -hmm. It's and about how you. Is how you share your message. How you identify with your audience. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that like shocks me. It's like Kanye is so far gone that he doesn't know who his audience is anymore. Anymore. And that's the truth about politics. If you don't know who your audience is, you'll never make impact. And I was lucky with the TikTok that I had because, yeah, I never could have imagined 35,000 people could vibe with me. Yes. I'm connect. weird. I got my own little stuff going on. Like, <laughs> I like who we I am. all do. We're all <laughs> weird. We all got our little stuff going on. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's just like because of the way social media is set up. Like, yeah, if you don't have enough followers, how can you even say you're a valid, valid person? How can yeah. you say you're popping all that yeah. stuff? But it's like, forget about that. You're forget about it. And we need, we got to get back to real community. Yeah, real, real community, real, real like, talk. Yes. Like, if I can't have a real talk with you, like, are we really even friends? And this is where like. I really just vibe with the fact that people saw me as being authentic because like very authentic, yeah. The way that I was talking to the audience, it's like, hey friend, you're <laughs> yes. in a bad relationship. This is Get all out. the bad things yeah. about this man. Like leave him. Yes. And that translated because it it's like a yeah. lot of people do feel like they're in a in a bad relationship with Toronto. It's true. It's yeah. true. And I'm glad I'm glad you made your mark on the city. I know this is this is only the beginning. And this you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. You have to you I have know. to keep doing what you're doing. You have the whole city behind you. Thank you. I hope you realize that. I I, I hope try you to. Honestly, like I take everything a day at a time and now people are like you're booked and busy. Booked like. and busy. <laughs> and clearly you've inherited your your mom's modesty because you're you're doing a lot. Thank you. You're doing a lot. Chloe, I could talk to you all day about politics and, and the city of Toronto, uh, but just in one moment, we're going to have Stephen Conville of Chronic Relief, and he's going to talk to you about life, politics, and cannabis. All right, we are back in studio with the one and only Stephen Conville. The one, the only. I love how you do that. Thank you so <laughs> much. It's unbelievable. Chloe Brown? Yes. <laughs> Can I call you Chloe B? Yeah. You know why? Because Cardi loves to talk politics too. <laughs> well, that's actually very, very smooth. But uh, it just when you have such an eruption, an explosion into popular culture, I feel like you need like a moniker, you know? You, need, <laughs> you, you know, you can't just, you know, like a soccer player, you're like, yeah. ha -ha, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, you just got to get one of those names because you did, you did so well. Yeah. So um, I want to get right at it. Okay. I don't want to sound flip it when I said it. I didn't think it was realistic to think that you yeah. were going to um, do the David Goliath thing um, mm -hmm. in round one. So is there a round two? And, and how, 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 how do we frame this? Because Mayor Tory mm -hmm. was very successful. Um, it took him almost 20 years to get that post. Yeah. So I don't want you to think that the first defeat signals loss. It's we, we've got to yeah. prepare now. And, and, and how are we going to take things to the next level? So it's funny you say that it took John Tory to get 20 years because it took two months for me to get 34,000. So like John is... John took a lot of time to do what I can do in a short amount of time, so I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not really pressed about that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's such a big question because it's like a few days ago, it's like I took everything a day at a time. Now booked and busy for four years. I still work at Ryerson. I have to finish my contract in January. I'm gonna come out with a playbook for new candidates so that they can understand how to navigate things and just get an easier time at it. <laughs> and uh, now that I've run against John, it's like I've really hit my peak in my profession. Like I've run for two offices. I've really just proven that young black policy analysts like myself are out here and we are doing the work. And that to me is the first step for changing the narrative.
because I don't think a lot of young people of color have the courage to run because of where we grew up. And I think that narrative has to change. Like whether you're from Galloway, Jungle, Rexdale, like it doesn't matter. The platform is yours. And my barber would be very upset if I didn't shout out Malvern. Malvern so, too. <laughs> so we'll put that in there. But and and I and I understand um, when you say, okay, I've shown the young mm. that they can run. But you need, and I'm going to stress the need, to show the young that you can win. Mm. And, 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 and no, you know, the, the, you know the phrase about the shoulders and the crown. Yes. And it's heavy. Yes. Right? So, you know, you've stepped up. And so now you can't just fade away because then you just become a, a murmur, right? Where do you need to get to to get your messages galvanized in policy? And the only way to do that is to win. Well, this is where a lot of people aren't really privy to the world of policy analysts because we, out, we outlive tons of politicians mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and this is where like forgive me but the show scandal the most powerful person isn't the president it's everyone working behind him mm -hmm. and this it's a is a figurehead yeah so this is where like me as a policy analyst take this power and start to move it behind the doors where it wasn't present before Mm -hmm. And this is where I'm trying to get more young people on the idea of what is game. Because game is not how much brands you wear. How do you move your community to get that community center, to get that housing mm -hmm. development? And that's not done by just pushing politicians. It's pushing their donors. It's pushing mm -hmm. everyone who puts them on that platform. So I understand what you're meaning when it, it's like, I need to win. But this win was nothing that was expected. Mm -hmm. Every political insider is wondering how I could get 34,000 plus votes with a budget of $1,900. And this is where young people need to think about like, how are you using these apps to build your clout? Because yeah, young black creators are dancing on TikTok, but are you getting the money from it? Are you able to step into a studio and pitch a Netflix series? How are you using your clout productively? And this is where I think the message about the election is so important because the election is one day. The next four years, I could push a bunch of policies and get that to happen with or without John Tory because there's three levels of government. John mm -hmm. Tory is one man. Mm -hmm. And this is where we were talking about it earlier. Young people are talking about, oh, it's not checkers, it's chess. People are playing Risk, they're playing Catan, they're playing Monopoly. Catan. If you can't get onto these games and the rules, you're gonna get left behind. So I might have not won in the traditional sense, but amassing power is a different game. And yeah, I'm not, I've just begun there. Only, only getting started. And I feel like we need that, that, that um, Olivia Pope. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? okay. She wears the white hat. <laughs> okay, so let, 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 let's, let's talk power, let's talk influence. I'm yeah. a ganja man, yes. true and true. Chronic relief is my business, and the cannabis sector is struggling. Mm -hmm. We hire, I think we're now among the top three employers across this country. No. Now, um, uh, I started a cannabis company like literally at the height of the pandemic, uh, I would not recommend that <laughs> just between us friends. Okay. You know, we started off with um, myself and four warriors. Now we're, we're close to 50 people. Oh. Um, and it's the Toronto area and, and we are, if not the most diverse company in this city, um, you know, we're pretty darn close. But. The cannabis policies are counterintuitive and counterproductive for the citizens, mm -hmm. for the investors, 
for the consumer and for the operators, mm -hmm. whether it be dispensaries or um, cultivators, and, and we are cultivators. So you as a policy analyst, um, how can I rely on someone like you to affect change in my sphere? So this is where lobbying becomes a very mm. exciting exciting but dark opportunity in politics because what you're talking about is a supply chain issue as well as a business development issue that could be turned into a political a political fire essentially mm -hmm. because when we're talking about the manufacturing of Canadian goods the federal government deeply desires an opportunity to market Canada to the world the more the provincial government hinders your your ability to produce the worse it looks on Canada. So this is where you get the operators, the retailers, and all the people that you can, because one of the biggest reasons why advocacy doesn't work is because people do it in pockets. Mm. So it's just me, the retailer, going to government. It's just me, the vendor, going to government. If you amass enough people, then the politicians have no choice but to listen. Mm. If you can get your people together in under five thousand dollars and you show up at queen's park and you make my life miserable i have no choice but to listen to you and if you only treat it like it's two brands popping off versus you're giving me a million dollars in your lifetime to perform a task and i'm not doing it then how am i ever going to change mm -hmm. and this is why I, I came for john tory's neck how dare you take upwards of three million dollars out of my pocket and think you're not going to tell me what you've done with it. Mm -hmm. Canadians are just like conservative. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to disrupt you, but you're robbing me. And I'd really <laughs> appreciate if you would stop robbing me. Yeah. That's not how you get things done. And this is why John Tory has no problem posing with black people during the elections, because what are you going to do about it? Mm. Are you going to tell me that like you're upset about the way I'm treating you or are you just going to be happy that you're in the proximity of power? And this is where like a lot of lower income black communities need to stand up for themselves mm -hmm. because you couldn't come through my community every four years and that's the only time you show up when yeah. you want something. You're bringing nothing to the table but your empty plate and I don't play those games unless I invited you mm -hmm. for dinner. And if I didn't, <laughs> What are, you doing what are you doing here? here? You know what I mean? And this is the type of attitude we need to hold for politicians because mm -hmm. no one gives them that energy. Mm -hmm. We're very polite to them mm -hmm. and they're robbing us. Mm -hmm. Like So so I mean I, this is example is very real to me mm -hmm. because um my parents are foundational members of the uh, Jamaican Canadian Association oh. Oh, wow. and um, you know I grew up in that organization and um, they do a lot of great community work mm -hmm. but voting is very important mm -hmm. and lobbying is important and volunteering for candidates campaigns is important and getting behind candidates is important that riding where um, it's in the Jane Finch corridor, mm -hmm. where the JCA is on Arrow Road, the Ontario Conservative government has not run a candidate in that area mm. for, I think it's 40 years now. Mm. So it's not even that we don't vote even if we did they don't want it mm. and so i want to get back to my original question because i'm not going to let you off the hook yeah you have a lot of knowledge um so so now like olivia pope north <laughs> OP north oh no um you know how do you marshal the candidates that you want 
so that you can secure the victories that we need mm -hmm. so that policy can be affected at all levels because I don't want to sound anti-fun guy because I mm. am the fun guy okay I <laughs> am the fun guy I'm, you, I'm the fun guy but you know this guy's an idiot or this guy's whatever I'm mm. gonna stand on this person's neck okay I mean it's cute and it's a great sound bite but unless you back it up with action we we, we're just left with sound bites. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and I think it's time for more. And with the knowledge that you have in your head, um, you know, some of us in our community were just like, this is too much stress. And yeah, as a guy, man, away, yeah. we'll just go and manating and then think about, oh, life is hard. And, 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 and not hold people accountable. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we are so far. And that's why I want to bring you that point. It's not even that we don't vote so they don't care. They don't care if we vote. Mm. That is, that is, that is, that is a, 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 something I'd like you to ponder because that's the depth, in my opinion, of disrespect. Mm. We're not even going to run a candidate. Mm -hmm. So those other people, they can represent you forever because mm. we don't care. I've been considered. That is. Yeah. Well, this is where it becomes very easy to get someone on the local level. It cost me two hundred dollars and twenty five signatures to run, mm -hmm. and that was like a conscious decision by me to be like, win or lose, John Tory's gonna have to meet me mm -hmm. somewhere, and he's gonna have to hear from me. And this is where people need to just take the risk of running versus trying to calculate their wins before their ch chickens hatch. Mm. Because I feel like too often we're a show and prove city versus taking a risk. And this is where certain artists have been more successful than others because taking that risk to take that bus into America by yourself is huge. And a lot of us rather be safe then take a risk. And mm -hmm. I understand that, but being in Canada, this is the safest place you can take a risk. Mm -hmm. And a lot more young people need to understand that. Like the government has a grant called the Summer Entrepreneur Program, where they'll give you $5,000 to run your business. Mm -hmm. How many of us are encouraging people that we know that could be good in business to take that risk? We're more afraid of them failing than we are of them even trying. Right. And this is where the mentality matters. Because, yeah, like, I went into this knowing John Tory could beat me, but I couldn't, I could not afford not to run. Because if he went unchallenged, then the idea that he would go unchallenged forever would have been cemented in people's minds. And that is a small risk to me, but it became a larger gain for the community. And this is where, individuals like ourselves where it's like yeah you know you can chat go chat to an go chat to a politician <laughs> go chat and record it and let people know you're not afraid to do it because that inspires me to do it mm. and this is where us as a community particularly people like 30 to 40 years old we literally need to take that risk for so many young people because at 31 I could have never imagined I could influence a 20-year-old girl to pursue this. Mm. That wasn't even my intention. My intention was to make sure people got heard, and that created so many more ripple effects. And that's the thing. Like, I don't go into anything thinking about, am I going to win? Mm -hmm. I go in thinking, does this create dignity, equality, and freedom for the people that matter for me? That's it. And that's, that. that is the springboard that I jump off of, because the inaction cost, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Inaction cost us in a way that we cannot quantify until two years later when we're like, yo, I could have done this. Mm -hmm. I could, this could have been me. And this is where we need to push each other because it's like, I know you know talented people who are underselling themselves. Mm -hmm. I know you know people that are underselling themselves. Definitely. And the difference between them reaching success and them not reaching success is you telling them, get off your ass and do this because I believe in you and I will get other people to believe in you and that's what Salom did for me. Sometimes I need to stand on your shoulders to get to the top to pull you, to out. Pull you out. Well, I'm gonna kind of 
wrap it in and wrap it in and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try and put a bow on it. Yeah. I'm not leaving you off the hook. Absolutely not. <laughs> I need that thirty four thousand to become three hundred thousand and then become six hundred thousand and become nine hundred thousand and I want my Chloe bees because you know how them have the beehive at <laughs> the I need your whatever it is that, that you say quoi. March we we're in line and I honestly I feel like we're there for me it's more about studying how this can turn into long-term wins and mm -hmm. how it can turn into talking about policy mm -hmm. in a cohesive way this is why we're having these conversations so many people you've already inspired as you said who are gonna while you're taking your your two second break they're gonna be out there pounding the pavement on your behalf yes 1-800-CHLOE-B that's the number <laughs> you call you know we're gonna get one of them bat signals so you know when we up in the sky, Chloe B. So it's it's her time to come. You know what I mean? And when you come, you're gonna be inspiring and motivating and giving the advice required for people to be successful. Because ultimately, when you're behind the people who win and you're pulling the puppet strings to make things happen, um, that's what I'm gonna be like. I, I told yours. you. <laughs> yes, thank Let you. Me. We need you. Give we need my a championship. I will bring the Raptors to the finals. Just give me my clipboard and let me do my work. Let her do. Let well, do you know, on 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 that note, I'm gonna say, me and all the ganja man them, we are gonna get together, um, and the Chronic Leaf team, as well as all the other um, uh, producers. And we're going to be phoning you and we're going to be saying, OK, look, we have these issues. And how can you help us um, make a change? Make a change. Um, I, I am personally very thankful that I had the opportunity um, to, to meet you and to vibes with you. I think that you should at least do this every eight years just to, <laughs> just to keep us on our toes. <laughs> Keep us on we our need toes. You, Chloe. you can't. You can't hide now. You have the people behind you. It you also can't put you it back you in. Know. Thank you. 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 You said it yourself. It's Pandora's box. You cannot get it back in the box. Nope. Yeah. Their loss, our gain, and um, you know, hostess to Moses. Thanks again so Thank much. You. And um, it's it, just to meet you. Thank you so much. And you have a great day. Thank you.